All right, so in this example, again, one of the main concerns that students want to do is always you know, rewrite everything. And we see that we have a subtraction problem, right? Well, do we want to, got it? we obviously have to subtract them, but we can only subtract when they're like terms. So the best thing to do to be able to identify when and where they're going to be like terms is to do what we call convert everything to terms of to sines and cosines. So therefore, cosecant, I can rewrite as 1 over sine of theta minus cosine of theta. And then cotangent, I can write as cosine of theta over sine of theta. Correct? Now, everything is written in terms of sines and cosines. So therefore, I can multiply these two. So I get 1 minus cosine, I'm sorry, 1 over sine theta over x times x is x squared. So would it make sense that cosine times cosine is cosine squared? Yes. So now we have cosine squared over sine, cosine squared of theta over sine of theta. Now you have two fractions with the same denominator. If you have two fractions with the same denominator, you just combine the numerator, right? And keep the denominator the same. So we have 1 minus cosine squared of theta all over sine of theta. Now again, we need to understand, well, what does 1 minus cosine squared of theta represent? So if you look at your Pythagorean identities, you guys realize there's an identity for um, cosine squared. And that's sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Well, that's not 1 minus cosine squared. But what if you subtracted a cosine squared of theta on both sides? Then you would have sine squared of theta equals, cos or equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So by looking at my identity that was given to me, what does 1 minus cosine squared, what is that equivalent to? Sine squared. And I'm going to show you guys a different way to rewrite this. Remember, x times x is x squared, right? Sine times sine is sine squared. So it might be easier. Yes? I don't know. Just want to see if you're still paying attention. Yep. So if I break apart sine squared is to sine times sine, you can again apply the division property for dividing out one pair of sines. And you can see that your final answer is sine of theta. That's somebody else's answers. Oh. Yep. Why would it not be?